All right, so CNN's Dana Bash did an absolutely absurd propaganda segment for Representative Josh Gottheimer out of New Jersey. And if you guys remember that name, uh, it's because Josh was one of the main corporate stooges in the House of Representatives who was leading the charge against the full $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation package. And he also was the guy who came up with the phrase, no salt, no dice, uh, which I'm going to remind you guys exactly what the salt cap repeal that he got shoved into this bill at the last minute actually is going to result in for the American people. But uh, let's just go ahead ahead and watch this clip because it's embarrassing on so many levels, not only because there's no journalism in this at all whatsoever, it's basically just a, a uh, you know, a jerk off session for Josh. Uh, but on top of that, he is just so blatantly wrong about so many things. So let's go ahead and watch this little clip here. Makes his sales job easier. This revives the state and local tax deduction known as SALT, which would help address his constituents top complaint, high taxes. I can talk about, hey, I got salt back, right? We're gonna, we're gonna make, we're gonna make life more affordable for you, and they go, oh, I like that. Where do you think the Democratic Party is right now? Is it in the right place as far as you're concerned? I think most people in the Democratic Party are somewhere in the middle or middle of the left. Listen, Bernie Sanders lost, right? And um, that, that's not where our party is. Bernie Sanders, a key player as this bill heads to the Senate doesn't like those tax deductions that are popular here. Back in the car, Gottheimer mentioned Sanders again while talking about the state of the Democratic Party. We're not into socialism, right? That's not, that's not, that's, it's not in the Democratic Party, that's the, right? We are about pragmatic problem solving and people who can just get things done and work together. Do you feel that you have to say we're not about socialism because you're being painted that way or because you're being pulled that way? No, because that's a reminder that we're not we're not the party of Bernie Sanders, we're the party of Joe Biden. We visited a local healthy fast food restaurant. Okay, so they continue with that clip, but I think that really is just representative of what this entire piece was supposed to be. And that is, again, just a giant jerk off propaganda segment for Josh Gottenheimer and this idea of the enlightened centrist uh, that people like him have been trying to propagate throughout this entire process. But listen, I'm definitely going to forget a lot of the things that were within that because there were so many different layers to how embarrassingly wrong all of that is. And first of all, uh, she doesn't even push back at all. And it's pointed out here by David Sirota, right? Uh, she, he says that this is a TV segment on a congressman who is the number one recipient of private equity cash who lives in a two million dollar home and who is pushing these salt tax breaks that would personally enrich him and dana bash from cnn doesn't even bother to mention mention any of that because absolutely nothing matters okay so this was just one of the things that she just completely failed to mention in all of that in that uh, ridiculous string of nonsense that he was putting together in that clip but i mean understand okay not only is he you know personally corrupt right this is like uh, a journalist not mentioning the fact that uh, joe manchin happens to own a coal company or has a large stake in the coal company that his son runs and is simultaneously opposing climate change legislation. It's like, yeah, no shit. This corruption is very out in the open. It's not difficult to see. But on top of that, I mean, she let him get away with so much. She let him get away with, first of all, bashing the man Bernie Sanders, okay? Uh, I, I hate going back to the 2020 Democratic primary, but let's just remember some very basic facts about what was happening at the time, okay? So first of all, Bernie Sanders' agenda, especially his economic agenda and his healthcare agenda, is overwhelmingly supported, not just back then but also right now by the American people, okay? Medicare for all, a $15 minimum wage, legalizing marijuana. You can go down the list of all of the flagship issues that Bernie was running on. His agenda was were, were the actual policies that the American people overwhelmingly supported. And the only reason why they ended up beating Bernie Sanders, okay? It's not like he was just really unpopular and so he lost the race fair and square. It took Obama going behind the scenes to make personal phone calls to Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg to get them to drop out at the last minute to prop up a a literal corpse in Joe Biden to make sure that anybody but Bernie actually actually ended up winning that election. Okay, so that's what happened. We saw everything that went on through that process. It took basically on top of, you know, this full display of uh, corporate propaganda here, it took the entirety of corporate media to be slamming and lying and smearing Bernie Sanders throughout the whole process uh, for them to actually end up coming on the other side of that with a nominee in Joe Biden. And even after all of that, all of the policies that Bernie Sanders was running on, those are still the main policies that people are focused on right now because they make sense and because they are overwhelmingly popular. So when Josh Gottenheimer sits there and he says, we are not the party of Bernie Sanders, okay, you might not be the party of Bernie Sanders because of corporate rules like you, but you should be the party of Bernie Sanders because that is much more representative of what the American people want. The American people are not standing behind the agenda of Josh Gottenheimer, okay? And even to the extent that they're standing behind the agenda of Joe Biden, he says at the end there, right, the last thing, the most ridiculous 
at face value thing that he says there is he says, we're not the party of Bernie Sanders. We're the party of Joe Biden. First of all, you should be the party of Bernie Sanders. But second of all, if you're the party of Joe Biden, why did you just stand in the way of his entire agenda? Okay, the $3.5 trillion bill was already watered down from the original $6 trillion number that Joe Biden initially promised. Then they watered it down to $3.5 trillion. Joe Biden was in favor, supposedly, of the $3.5 trillion number. So why would you oppose that if you're the party of Joe Biden? Why are you opposing and blocking Joe Biden's agenda? Okay, it just, it doesn't make any sense at face value. And Dana Bash literally only asks questions that are like, you know, how how smart do you think that you are as an enlightened centrist? You know, uh, how much do you feel that you have to remind everybody that this isn't the party of the scary commie socialist Bernie Sanders? It's like, those are the types of questions, the softballs that these supposed journalists are asking these people. And again, just to remind you guys exactly how unpopular the things that Josh Gottenheimer was pushing throughout this process, right? He pretends to be this enlightened centrist. I'm just trying to get, you know, uh, uh, get the job done, right? They, they, call, they call themselves the Problem Solvers Caucus. Okay, fuck off. You're not solving any problems. You are literally just representing corporate America and blocking the most popular policies that the American people actually want to see passed. So again, he was the guy who was pushing this salt cap repeal, okay, within the Democratic Party. Okay, so what is the salt cap repeal? Because he was just saying, you know, I get to go back to my constituents and tell them, you know, I saved you a little bit of money here and there. Well, it's now the second biggest program in the Democrats spending plan. So as Josh Gottenheimer and those other corporate ghouls within the House were going out and saying, we can't afford free community college, we can't afford, uh, you know, to do uh, Medicare negotiating drug prices, even though that would save us money, we can't afford to do this, we can't afford to do that, right? Gutting all of these uh, welfare programs, basically, or gutting all of these actually substantive, uh, substantive programs that were in the Build Back Better Act, and then they simultaneously demand, okay, he said it, he said that was his red line in the sand, he said, no salt, no deal, no salt, no dice, meaning unless we can inject this expensive tax cut for millionaires, and I'm going to show you exactly how it's a tax cut for millionaires in a second here, but this is the now the second most expensive part of this bill. So these same people who pretend to care about fiscal responsibility are simultaneously shoving through tax cuts for millionaires that are the second most costly part of this supposed social spending bill. This is not a social spending bill if this is where you're spending a bulk of your money on, okay? That's not social spending. That's just welfare to rich people, okay? Um, but just to give you a reminder in terms of who is actually benefiting from the SALT repeal, because he pretends as if he's, you know, I'm just walking around this uh, friendly neighborhood or wherever he was, friendly uh, little restaurant here with average Joes and Janes out there. Well, who's actually benefiting from the salt cap repeal, okay? Well, you see here, the top 1% would benefit 55%. So 55% of the benefits from repealing the salt cap would go to the top 1%. And then on top of that, nearly 40% of the benefits would go to the top 10%. So in other words, nearly 90% of the benefits of repealing the salt cap and Democrats are still deciding exactly how they're going to go about it and figuring out the logistics of it. But just with a full salt cap repeal, okay, 90% of the benefits would go to the top 10%. This is nothing but a handout to the wealthy and specifically handout to wealthy people in blue states, primarily in blue cities, primarily, which is why people like uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi in San Francisco and Chuck Schumer uh, in New York, uh, why they would support something like this. Okay. It's just a tax cut for rich assholes in blue states. That's all it is. Okay. And he's pretending as if that's what the American people wanted. Not only is that not what the American people wanted, but they overwhelmingly did not want that. Okay. You see here, voters oppose repealing the salt cap deduction. Okay. And it's not even really close. All right. You see here, all likely voters 36% support, 49% oppose. So that's a negative 13 rating there uh, for this specific policy that he is pretending is some sort of a, a, a big, bold win for average Americans, okay? But what did Americans actually want? Well, the $3.5 trillion number that he and his little corporate stooge, corporate puppet buddies uh, ended up getting slashed into the $1.75 trillion bill that it's in right now. Um, if you go and you look at this, okay, Democrats support uh, not only Democrats, but all likely voters overwhelmingly support the $3.5 trillion number. So he's just lying when he goes out there and he pretends like he's the one representing what the American people want and that the American people don't want this scary radical socialist plan like the one that Bernie Sanders had in place with the $3.5 trillion bill, which again was already watered down from the original $6 trillion bill, which is what Bernie Sanders initially wanted. But with the $3.5 trillion bill, again, it's not even close. All likely voters, 61% support to 30 oppose. Okay, net 31, we're talking about a net 31. And even if you go down here, even among the Republicans, it's still 40% in support of this, all right? 
plus 26 among independents. So you want to talk about like bipartisanship. This is the problem, okay? Guys like Josh Gottenheimer, they want you to believe that bipartisanship is when, you know, a handful of corporate corrupted Democrats get together with a handful of corporate corrupted Republicans, and then they pass a massively corrupted agenda, okay? There's a big difference between what it means to be in the middle or uh, forming a bipartisan coalition in Washington, D.C., in that swamp with other swamp creatures versus what it means to form an actual bipartisan coalition among the American people, okay? The $3.5 trillion bill, that's a bipartisan coalition right there, okay? Having 40% of Republicans, nearly 60% of independents, and 83% of Democrats, that's about as much of a bipartisan coalition among the American people as you could possibly ask for. And yet Josh Gottenheimer is saying that Bernie Sanders is on the fringe. Bernie Sanders is not on the fringe. He is the mainstream. He is literally supporting what the overwhelming majority of the country wants, okay? He is the centrist. You are a far-right corporate puppet uh, who is an extremist relative to the American people very clearly. So listen, okay, we're going to continue to see propaganda segments like this propping up this uh, grand idea of the enlightened centrist. We've been seeing this throughout this entire negotiation process. Outlets like CNN, they have completely failed to adequately report on the negotiations surrounding the $3.5 trillion, now the $1.75 trillion Build Back Better plan and the infrastructure bill. And then they turn around and they're like, we can't figure out why Biden's approval rating is tanking. We can't figure out why Democrats are set to get absolutely obliterated in 2022. Well, it's because of the shit that we just talked about. It's because you go out there and Joe Biden promises all of these different policy initiatives that he has absolutely no intention whatsoever to actually fight for to get passed. And then when his entire agenda, basically, all of the major promises that he had said to the American people while he ran his campaign get completely eviscerated by a handful of members of his own party and replaced with things like giving a tax cut to millionaires. People see that. People understand that. And they're not stupid, okay? People see the corruption as it is unfolding before their eyes. So if you wanted to actually form a popular policy or a popular party, you would do it around the agenda of somebody like Bernie Sanders, okay? And another funny thing that he said there that is just absolutely at face value ridiculous, he calls Bernie Sanders a socialist, all right? Listen, I love the guy, okay? Bernie, great guy. He's done a lot in terms of my personal political development, right? In both of the times that he ran in 2016, 2020, but he's not a fully fledged socialist. He is a, you know, democratic socialist or a social democrat. That's how he identifies with himself. He is not a, a socialist in the sense that I am a socialist or how I define socialism, okay? He's really more of like an FDR style capitalist, okay? He is the kind of guy who could have saved the capitalist system in the same way that FDR did during the Great Depression, okay? Now we've just gone fully off the rails, not even pretending to try to adjust to the glaring flaws within the capitalist system. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know where we go from here because we have a Republican Party that is entirely uh, bought and controlled by corporate America. And not only that, but they don't even really pretend to care about, uh, you know, having any facade or semblance of democracy anymore. And then you have a Democratic Party that is so also bought and controlled by corporate America that they not only aren't willing to uh, push back against Republicans in any serious way, whether it's on voting rights, whether it's on climate change, whether it's on any of the major hallmark issues, healthcare, the economy, anything. So they're not willing to push us back in the left-wing direction. So we're just left with two right-wing corporate parties, two right-wing corporate establishments who are not doing absolutely jack shit for the American people. And uh, it's looking pretty bleak, especially considering that we have a media that is not even willing to ask the bare minimum questions of these completely corrupted representatives.